Um, so, so just to, just to give people some feedback here, I don't know why my, I don't know why OBS crashed on me, but, uh, welcome back. If you're listening, um, you, the, it just crashed like in the last five seconds. So don't, don't feel bad. Um, I am not going to Vegas. Um, I, um, uh, I've heard, so between recon and RSAC, um, I've heard more than a few people mention that they got COVID. And so, uh, I mean, I went down on a work trip a couple of weeks ago, uh, to uh, LA and I was okay there. We did have a couple of people come back with the vid, but, uh, other than my own conference up here in Seattle, I'm really not interested in hanging out in a big hotel with a bunch of people who may or may not be uh, vaccinated. So, uh, sure. I mean, if, if it wasn't a camping conference, uh, InfoSec camp out, I probably would have uh, suggested we cancel ours this year. Um, but yeah, I I'm, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a little odd for me. Uh, I know blue team cons going on the same weekend as InfoSec camp out, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little, a little confused, uh, uh, about, you know, the the metrics are showing that it's going up in cases and I'm I'm really worried about oh you know people people not playing it safe. So yeah, I'm I have to say um to be fair, um right now the part of the part of Vegas that I'm committed to is the training. So right. I'll be going for the training um in person. Um but I don't know if I'm I I know that I'm not going to DEF CON in person. I, um, so I'm not going to DEF CON in person. I am going to Black Hat training in person. I'm not sure if I'm going to Black Hat conference in person. Right. It's kind of going to, for me, it's going to depend on on how case counts have been trending and all that. Um, yeah. I think if if things are, you know, if things are dicey enough, if the if that trend that you've been talking about between, you know, RSA conference and um, what was the other that you? Recon. That you recon, uh, and recon. Recon was up in Toronto. Half my half my red team here in my office uh, uh, were, were down with the vid for a couple of days. Wow. Man, I, I felt bad I didn't go because the DJs, the, uh, the, the, the DJ set for that uh, for that conference yep. was going to be epic. Yep. So, uh, but I can also imagine, you know, if your whole team was doing what I do and dancing their butt off, um, yeah. that would, you know, that would be a hell of an op- of an opportunity yeah. to to spread some bit around. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Hushcon Hushcon just I think ended this weekend too. So up in uh, NYC. So we'll we'll see what uh, what comes out of that too. I'm sure we'll see a, a couple more folks uh, on uh, on on Twitter mention it as well. So we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, NYC is wow. a whole different ball of population density. So you know we'll, we'll see oh, what happens. Oh yeah. Here. Yeah. So, so if I I'm eager to see what the numbers are like. This is. Uh, yeah, the other thing I keep hoping is I keep hoping that I can get my next booster. I've had one booster, but I, I sure wouldn't mind if I had the opportunity to get a another booster yeah. right before Vegas because um, the I think the what I read was uh, basically you get like after a booster you tend to get a heck of a lot of immunity for it's like one or two months. Yeah, um, but it's it's a pretty short time window and and. Uh, um, but during that time, I mean, so I have a couple parents who who managed to stay away from getting COVID um, for you know two years, and yep. uh, they finally, unfortunately, got it recently. And one of them had just had a booster, um, and the other one didn't realize that he was eligible for a booster, and so he hadn't had it. And yep. the difference between how hard it hit the two of them was um, was. Um, was pretty remarkable you know it's pretty remarkable yeah um, so um, yeah i'm um i'm i'm debating whether or not to say i'm immunocompromised so i can get a shot it's not like that there's a shortage of vaccinations um because we're heading to europe in seven weeks so it's like do you know do we hope that you know it'll open up for less than uh, uh, people under the age of 50 or or what have you i mean um, I, I, I would, I would have less, I'd have more of an issue with it if I was taking, you know, vaccines away from people who needed them, but it sounds like there's not a lot of people getting them period. Uh, or, or, you know, sure. there's no shortages, at least up here in the Seattle area. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm debating on whether or not to get it, uh, to get the four shot, to, you know, just to, just to say I can, I mean, technically my wife is somewhat immunocompromised, but I've always felt weird 
you know, using that system. And apparently I make too much money as a veteran to be able to get uh, vaccines through the VA. So uh, it is what it is. So what about, I mean, what about the place you're going to? They may have, uh, they may, you know, if they, if they permit, like you get medical care there, or if you, I wonder Mm. if you can get a vaccine shop there. Uh, yeah, we're taking a, we're taking the Holland America cruise, but Amsterdam, Amsterdam probably might, might, might have that. I know they do have, you know, um, testing facilities, but yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I haven't, I haven't investigated the, uh, getting the, getting a booster over in Europe. I don't know what, what cocktails they have over there. So they're using the same ones or not. So, yeah. I think so. I think Western, yep. I think Western Europe has got the same ones we've got. I'm not sure. Oh, that's cool. I don't even know okay. how that would all pan out. Wow. We're, talk, we're infosec talking health uh, and not like mental health where we might well, possibly have something informed to well, say. <laughs> this is we, great. Well, we are talking statistics. We are talking like supply Fair chain, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, yeah. Oh, I so, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, okay. So Kubernetes is kind of your thing. You have Busta Cube. Uh, you are you. You're still acts actually actively working on that. I would imagine uh, we can probably do a little demo of that here in a second. Um, yeah. Tell us what Busta Cube is all about. So so I I work on uh, I work on a couple tools in the Kubernetes space. One of them is an intentionally vulnerable Kubernetes cluster called uh, Busta Cube, and um, it's basically a, a three node cluster you can download and. Um, and use it to, uh, it's got a couple scenarios. I'm going to show you a scenario today that isn't in Busta Cube, but we uh, oh, nice. but we really should add to it. And um, and you can basically play your way through these scenarios um, as a way of, of practicing both attack and then also defense. We kind of put the files on the, on the cluster so that once you compromise the cluster and um, you can uh, you can actually apply this apply the same kind of def- the same kind of defenses that I teach in my classes. So okay, um, okay. The other tool, um, the other tool I've been working on for a while. Um, we had a bunch of people at InGuardians who wrote it. It's on GitHub. It's called it's called Parades, and it's basically like a pen test tool um, for Kubernetes. It's not something made to go and find all the issues for you. This isn't like a a Nessus, you know, it's not like a, a a cluster scanner to find bad things. It's rather something you can use um, uh, in the course of running attacks. And right. we've automated a couple attacks, like soup to nuts. But for the bulk, for the most part, it's more like here's a tool you can use. Think, you know, I was uh, I was going to say think more Nmap um, than oh, Nessus, okay. but it's even more like yeah, it's even kind of like less automated, more. Um, these are things that are really useful. So very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to, you can feel free to share your screen. I'm going to make some changes around here. I'm going to stop my video and turn on my, uh, my other video. Uh, oh, and cool. so that way you have, uh, the, the. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to change my screen resolution for a second. Okay. And because I've got a very big screen in front of me that's unfortunately very wide. And so what I want to do is tell it to, is um, is tell it to emulate the resolution of the, uh, not that way, the other way. Um, <laughs> tell it to emulate the resolution of the other one. So optimize for, perfect. So when did uh, so while we're while we're working through that when did uh, when did they make you CEO was it just you know uh, was there an intervention and it's like hey Jay you know uh, we really need to to you know we need we really need a CEO and you know you're in the barrel this week or how does that work how did that work <laughs> um, just a second I'm 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 so uh, awful at multitasking um, you know what we're just gonna use the second monitor yeah so um, here we go so. It was a while back, and um, uh, I think the the short version is that um, I while I'm while I'm technical and I do a bunch of technical stuff, um, I also do I also uh, do a fair bit of sales, and it was just a kind of like simple reorg where um, uh, they. Uh, the partners asked me to ask me to start running sales and that mm. and uh and basically you 
get a cool job out of that. So um, Very nice. that's part, that's, that's, that's kind of part of it. Um, I, I don't know that that's, I think that's, that's as much as a really, <laughs> it's, it's a weird thing. It's like, yeah, I don't know that, that somehow they, uh, somehow they decided that I'd be the, I'd be the guy and uh, got me to, got me to take it on. It's been a, it's been a, it's been a good gig. It's been, uh, cool. um, yeah, it's just, it's put me in a, uh, it's put me in a good position to, um, to talk about the company to, you know, to clients and, um, and, um, and also to, to just do a lot of the kind of industry networking we all do. And okay. it's, yeah. So I get an impressive title, which unfortunately also means a whole bunch of responsibility. Not unfortunately, but um, you sure as hell don't get to point at somebody else and say it's their fault because, right. you know, it, leadership means the, means the uh, um, buck stops here. And yep. Um, yep. so I, I'd say it's more, more stress, like, like it's, it's good for the ego. Everything else is definitely, definitely, uh, definitely more work. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I've always enjoyed more work. So oh, that's you know, awesome. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I, well, considering I did not realize you were the CEO at the time too. Um, I'm, I'm even more, um, uh, thankful that we could get the time for you to come on and, and talk about this stuff. So I, I do appreciate that. Um, uh, we've had other folks on our show from in guardians on, we've had Jared Freitas, uh, on and, uh, Adam Crompton and, and some of the other folks as well. So, you know, um, oh, a lot of, a lot of, you have a stable of excellent talent there that, uh, you know, people should definitely check out if they, uh, you know, if they, uh, you know, need, need security assessments. So now they, in guardians, in guardians doesn't sponsor us. I mean, Jared did up his, uh, uh, his Patreon support for us. I do appreciate that, but, uh, they're, they're not an official sponsor, but, uh, you know, I, I would definitely put our, put our, put our reputation behind getting a, you, you won't get a bad, uh, bad, uh, test at in guardians. So I'm just, you know, putting that out there. So. Well, thank you, Brian. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we've got some, we've 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 uh, we've worked really hard to uh, to both get some really really capable folks, and then to you know then to help them build their capability. And it's uh, you know you mentioned boutique. In some ways, that's in some ways that it's kept our size more limited um, than you know than if we than if we went a different way. But that's meant that like at In Guardians, for the most part, we kind of don't have um we, we just basically have senior people on everything um right. that is nowhere near as scalable as you know as the uh um as the you know as the i was going to say big five or you know big four accounting firm type model yep. um where you have this kind of regular stable of really of really uh um inexperienced people coming through but it means that we can do we can do really great work um we feel always feel really really good about our quality um and it gives us kind of a, a really clear wow i'm gonna sound like a business person for a second it gives us a really really clear brand right like we'll we'll give you we'll, we'll give you quality we will give you like super senior super senior people they'll all be smarter than me and uh and i will just be you know i'll just be trying to keep up so he's synergizing the paradigms. He's, oh, no. you know, he's on the Gardner quadrants, and his Forester waves are the are the are the sickest. And yeah, you know, I'm just you're making me a Dilbert pointy haired boss here. Except, except no. the cool thing is, I shaved my head so that there's no opportunity for the uh, for the pointy hair. That's beautiful. Um, no, I'm okay. No, yeah. I, I you know it, it's good to you know. It, we're, you're not a soulless corporation. I think that's the, that's the point. And, you know, you, you're, you, y'all, by keeping yourself small, uh, you're, you're, you're giving people like quality work, you know, and, and it, it is hard. I mean, uh, I, when I work for, I work for an organization, uh, Jay knows which company that is. Uh, and, uh, it's hard to, there is a specific amount of pen testing talent out there, especially, you know, even in our own house, we find we have to go out to third parties and, there's, it's a finite, it's a finite pool, right? And, oh, yeah. and there's only so many companies out there that you can either get a good pen test from or get a pen test that you pay for that, you know, you're worried about, you know, um, there, yeah. there's, there's only a certain number of companies that have actually had enough wherewithal to go. Yeah, we can get a good pen test from them or, oh yeah, we can, you know, we can definitely, you know, understand what we're going to be getting from them and getting good value from that. So I, I can, yeah. I completely, I completely get it. Yeah. Um, it's, so it, yeah, yeah, absolutely. 
Um, so we we have a we have a couple of viewers. That's good. Um, I've had them ask. Uh, feel free to ask us questions. Uh, yes, I do awesome. have two cameras on right now. Um, and so Jay's going to be going through some Busted Cube stuff with us as well as, um, um, you know, whatever he feels like he's driving at this point. So, um, I'm just here to ask questions and to help understand, uh, some of the, the newest, uh, issues with Kubernetes. Maybe we could talk about some of that as well. Once we, once we get through your, your example for Kubernetes, uh, Busted Cube, um, because, um, it's been a minute since we've done a podcast on Kubernetes, anything. So, um, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what we, what we can, you know, uh, talk about in that respect. You know, I have an idea here. Um, there's something different that I could do real quick before I do demo. Okay. I actually, um, so, so, um, uh, in guardians, um, we do a few Kubernetes workshops for free lately. So we've been doing these kind of like one hour, you know, like one and a half hour hands-on workshops where we spend the first like 30 minutes kind of doing lecture and then we give everybody a, and then we give everybody a cloud system and, you know, they can, they can connect to a web browser and then do everything and then do an exercise hands-on. And I just literally did one of those last week. I can oh. pop up some stream. I could pop up some slides and talk Kubernetes a little bit to, to put some of this in context. I like think that would be good. Yeah. People um, are really new to this stuff. Yeah. I, uh, Bloodbound had asked some questions about, uh, you know, um, talking about corporations and, you know, uh, you know, examples of, you know, I, I was thinking of how people might actually use Kubernetes, not, not just in a home lab environment, but I know for like malware analysis and things, uh, you can potentially use that uh, to to help uh, do things like automated workflows and to make sure you're setting up environments the same way every time. Uh, we have a reverse engineering class that one of our one of our um, uh, friends Tanisha is going to be doing for us on a regular basis, and she's going to be you know running some things in Docker, and uh, which is not the same as Kubernetes, but is very similar in how you know it it, it you know it handles um, automation workflows. So um, yeah, I'd love to love to have some slides up, and we can talk about some of the the within the last, you know, six months to a year of Kubernetes changes that have occurred, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Let's see. Let me share my screen. Make sure. I, I also did right tweet one. out uh, that uh, you're, you're on the show. So hopefully uh, people will, will, will join us as they, as they see this. You know, oh, nice. let me go and uh, that seems like a really good idea that I should go and retweet that real quick. So um, yeah, let's take care of that right now. Okay. Um, done. <clears throat> cool. So, where are my slides? Yeah, so let's talk Kubernetes a little bit. So these are the slides from a, a workshop we just did. We're actually doing another couple workshops in the next couple months. Um, and you can find those three workshops at this link that you see on the screen, the uh, www.inguardians.com slash Kubernetes. Um, we have two different workshops. This one was a hacking and defending Kubernetes, like hands-on for beginners. Um, we've got another we've got another workshop like that. Um, I think that's about two months from now. Um, and then we also have a, a one hour kind of um, Kubernetes zero to hero kind of it, one hour is not quite enough to do that, but it's kind of like an excerpt. And yep. um, uh, so yeah, so let's just let's talk a little bit about attack. Um, I'm I've just popped up my slides directly from that workshop. So I had to skip yep. through a few slides right now that tell you what to do with your with your lab machine, but but uh, you won't have a lab machine right now. Okay. So um, so I always talk about Kubernetes first by kind of talking about the uh, I'll call it the temporal ecosystem, the the time that it came from. Um, so the first the first thing I talk about when I want to say like kind of where what gave birth to Kubernetes or what gave birth to the to the kind of um, to the kind of um, organization. Um, uh, way of organizing computer resources that um, that Kubernetes is um, is to look at the Jeff Bezos memo from 2002. Um, so the Jeff Bezos's 2002 memo basically said, "Hey, going forward, um, all the teams need to you know there's there's we're at Amazon. Um, this is before AWS exists. At Amazon." Um, uh, all, everybody with lots of different teams here that are providing different programs to other teams to make all of this e-commerce happen. 
Mm -hmm. um, but we've just we've, we've made a decision and it's a really big decision um, going forward all the teams that are exposing functionality or data to other teams a nice way of saying this is like if any of the teams have a program that they're making available to other teams um, going forward you have to put an api interface on it he calls this a service interface right so right. um uh it's a really it's kind of almost funny in the way the memo's written it said like all the teams have to expose their data and functionality through through apis teams will communicate with each other only through these apis you're not allowed to do anything else you're not allowed to read your another team's you know database directly you're not allowed to do anything shared memory not no back doors nothing except for api calls over the network we don't care what technology you, you use. You can use Python, you can use you know Rust, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. languages, whatever frameworks. And then without exception, um, all of these APIs have to be designed from the ground up to be, and it seems like he invents a word here, externalizable, which is right. to say that the team has to plan that even though the thing they've been making was only gonna be available to other, to you know inside of Amazon, you have to expect at any point management here at Amazon may start selling, um, you know, selling use of your service to developers in the outside world. No exceptions. And then the mandate closes with anybody who doesn't do this will be fired. Thank you. Have a nice day. That's kind of the funny, not funny part. Right. But the silly, you know, if you take an example, if you're the team that happens to like, you're like, listen, we, we're kind of a boring team. Like we're a little team and all we do is we, we create, you know, uh, Postgres databases on demand for people, you know, we, we've got, you know, we've got a kind of little web interface where you can go to the web interface and say you want a Postgres database created, you kind of say how big you want it to be um, and, um, you know, and, and what its name should be and create some accounts. Well, it's like, okay, well, congratulations. You now have to make that, you have to make that a service we can sell. And that right. in many ways is kind of the birth of RDS, which creates Postgres databases for anybody in the world. Anytime you want, automatically tears them back down. So this is kind of the first part of where uh, a way of thinking about where Kubernetes comes from is this, because this gave birth to um, the current cloud native movement. It gave birth to basically the current round of public cloud. Um, so it, so it, it feels like everything is just kind of almost like clay and you're just taking little pieces off and turning this into a database or this into a, a service. And then once you're done, you can just lump that back into the clay and use it as resources later. Everything is just resources, either it'd be just disk resources. space or CPU or, or a network connection. Yeah. And the good, and the, and the, the other part of that that's really important is that 